Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Costello. It is day three, this is our last unit, so this is my last video for the year for Algebra 2 Honors, so let's have some fun. All right, we've got a ton of vocab right now. A lot of it is familiar, so like that whole top row should be familiar to us, and then we get to stuff that we might not have talked about, but something that we've seen before. So, here we go. Acute angles. Acute angles are less than 90 degrees. Again, this is something that I'm really hoping, you know, we know. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. Exactly 90 degrees. Perfect. Obtuse angles are bigger than 90 degrees. Okay. But they're also less than 180, so if you need to put that in, that might not be a bad idea. And then we have straight angles, and straight angles are exactly 180 degrees. Awesome. So we got all of our types of angles, so if I went through that a little quick, you might want to pause your video, get those definitions down. Now, there's other parts of our angles that we might not have talked about right now. So we're drawing angles, but we're mostly drawing them in a coordinate plane. So we have something called an initial side. The initial side is really the base of the angle. So if you want, that's kind of how I refer to it. So I would put that down, the base of the angle, always on the positive x axis when we're doing, because we are doing all of these in a coordinate plane. The terminal side. Now the terminal side is like the open side of the angle. So it's the ray that opens to whatever degree it is. Okay, I call it the open side. So you can go ahead and put that. Okay, opens to the designated degree. Awesome. Now, the standard position, we're pretty much just rolling in standard position today. You don't really have to worry about any other positions, but standard position is where your vertex is at the origin. That's the first part. And then the initial side is on the positive x-axis. All right, again, if you, you know, need some time to get those down, you can go ahead and pause your video and get those definitions down. The only other thing that we're going to talk about or put in here is the number of degrees in a circle. Just a reminder, right, just in case we're having some brain farts. So there's 360 degrees in a circle. Just going to keep that in mind because we are going to kind of, you know, draw out some angles that might be a little bit bigger than 360. So... Most of our day today is going to be drawing some angles in standard position. So each, we are always going to start on the positive x-axis. So I'm going to put my vertex at 0, 0, and then this is my uh, initial side, right? It's going to be on the x-axis. Now, when we do these, oops, I forgot to give you a note. Um, when we do these, we always go counterclockwise. And that's going to be very important on some of these other days when we talk about like our unit circle and stuff, but you always move counterclockwise to open up your angle. So we are going to the left, we're not going to the right. So my first angle is 135 degrees. So I would cons think about like each of these quadrants, like each corner, like that's a 90 degree angle. And so we wanna be somewhere um, bigger than 90, but also less than 180 because 135 is less than 180. If you subtract 90 degrees, because I kind of think of these in terms of 90 degrees, so like each little corner is 90 degrees, um, 135 minus 90 is 45. So really, I'm going to be in the second quadrant, but I'm going to be kind of like halfway through, see? 
And that's going to be about 135. And we're going to kind of talk about doing some more of this, like kind of thinking in terms of 90 degrees or in terms of each quadrant in a little bit. Okay. Same thing on number two. Number two says uh, 300. So I'm going to put my initial side in again, right on the x-axis, just like that. Now, um, we are going to do 300. We are going to move counterclockwise. So we're not going to do a full circle, but quadrant one, that's 90, 180, 270. So we are in that fourth quadrant and we are just barely over 270, right? 300 minus 270 is about 30 degrees. So you kind of want to be like a third of the way through the quadrant like that. Cause remember your whole angle, this whole piece right here is 300 degrees. Number three, negative 120. So I know I said we always go counterclockwise. When you have your negative, think you need to now go kind of clockwise instead, because it's negative. So we're gonna be moving in the opposite direction. So now we're still gonna start here on the x-axis, but we are going to move to the right instead. So moving to the right, again, this first one is 90, and then uh, 120 is just 30 more than 90, so we'll go like a third of the way through, like that. So this is about 120 degrees. Again, these aren't gonna be exact, they're just gonna be kinda like around where they're at, but it's really good that we're getting used to this right now. Okay, 405, 405, well, that's bigger than 360. So I know I'm gonna be going a whole, you know, circle all the way around once, and I will show you how to draw that in. But let's see where we actually end up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 360 degrees. If I do 405 minus 360, I'm going to get 45 degrees. So really, here's what happens. I'm gonna draw my initial side. Okay, I am going to go all the way around once, and then I'm gonna come back around 45 degrees, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw that 45 degrees in right now. Remember, it's halfway, it's half of 90, okay? And when I draw that 45 degrees, I'm gonna draw an extra little like squiggly in there, so this shows that I went all the way around 405 degrees. So, sorry, I should connect that a little bit better. There we go, so we went all the way around. It's kinda like a little swirly. Yay. All right. There's one page done. Okay. So next thing we're going to talk about is coterminal angles. So coterminal angles, they're basically in the same spot. They are angles that share a same initial and terminal side. So let's go ahead and write that down. Angles that share a common initial and terminal side. And like I said before, that basically means that they are in the same position. Okay, so like for example, um, if I did if I did like 270 degrees, like going counterclockwise, I would end up in the same spot as if I did negative 90 degrees, right? Because then I would move clockwise. And we're gonna do a bunch of these examples, so if you can't really see it right now, that is okay. So to find a coterminal angle, we're gonna add or subtract any multiples of 360 because remember we move in a full circle so that should make sense like if you start in one position and go 360 degrees you should be in the same spot so let's find one positive and one negative angle that is coterminal with each angle so for 210 so for the positive we would add right so 210 plus 360 is going to be 570 degrees now the negative, we're just gonna subtract. So 210 minus 360 degrees, which would be negative 150 degrees. So those would be my two angles, right? Same thing on number six. Number six, 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and add, right, to find that positive. Even though it's negative, we're going to add it. So if I add 360 to negative 55, I'm going to get 305 degrees. And that negative, if we write minus 55 and we subtract 360 degrees, we get negative 415 degrees. So 305 and 415 are going to be my two, negative 415, my bad. Cool. Okay. Number seven, we have to be a little bit careful because 485 right now is bigger than 360. So if I subtract 360, right, or like if I'm going to add 360, I mean, I guess you could add 360. But why don't we go ahead and just subtract 360 because since it's bigger, it's still going to be positive. So if I subtract, I'm going to get positive 125. Now, to get the negative, I would actually just take the 125 and subtract 360 because those guys are still going to be in the same position. So then that would be negative 235 degrees. So those are my two angles right there. All right. We got a couple more about coterminal angles, then we're gonna do some reference. Oh man, we got a couple more things to do. There's a lot of stuff in this section. Okay, find an expression that represents all coterminal angles for the angle. So I have 975, so I'm gonna start with 975. Now I know I can either add or subtract um, 360, right? So I'm gonna put 360 and I'm gonna put the letter N. Now N can be positive or negative. If it's negative, that would, you know, turn our plus sign into a minus sign. So I don't really have to do anything else there. I just have to say it's plus, you know, uh, 360N. Same thing on number nine. Even though it's a negative, we're going to start with negative two, three, four, and add 360 times N. And N is just going to be like the number of multiples of 360. Right, and the last one, find a coterminal within one revolution, so one 360 of, oh my gosh, it's a huge number. So you can either add 360 or subtract 360. Why don't you guys go ahead and do that and then see if you can get the right answer. So go ahead and pause your video now. Hopefully you got either, if you added, you should have gotten 223,838 degrees or if you subtracted, uh, 223,118 degrees. Dang. Okay. Sweet. Reference angles. So reference angles are going to be positive and acute angles that are always going to be measured to the x-axis. Okay. What does that mean? It means like we, our reference angles are always going to be like 180 degrees or smaller. Okay, so the terminal side inside one, so quad, quadrant one is our positive quadrant, and I'll kind of label them on our first example. Your re, you don't have to do anything to find the reference angle. Your reference angle is going to equal the reference angle. So reference angle equals the angle. Terminal side in quad two you would subtract 180 degrees from that angle because quadrant two approaches that 180. So you would do 180 minus whatever angle you're rolling with. And again, we'll do some examples so this will make sense. Terminal side in quad three, well quad three is like the full 180 and then a little bit more, so, really, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than 180. So you would need to do the angle minus 180 this time. And then our last one, our terminal side in quadrant four. Well, those are going to be some very, very big numbers. So what you can do is you can do 360 minus your angle to get your reference angle. So your reference angles are going to be a lot small. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier when I was going, oh, well, you know, it's 45 and 45 is kind of, you know, it's halfway to 90. This is what I'm talking about, but in each quadrant. So draw an angle with the given measure in standard position, then locate and name its reference angle. So 150, 150, um, I'm going to, of course, start in standard position. So I'm going to start on that x-axis. 
150 is bigger than 90, so I know it's going to be in quadrant two. So this is quadrant one, two, three, and four. And would you look at that? They roll counterclockwise, just like how our angles do. Wow, wow. Okay, so our reference angle, this one's going to be 180 minus the angle. So 180 minus 50 is 30 degrees. Okay, so our reference angle is gonna be in quadrant two, so we're gonna write quadrant two, and we're gonna write 30 degrees for that reference angle. Now, how does that help us? Well, if we go into quadrant two and we look at this axis, right, because this is where quadrant two is, we can go 30 degrees up from that. So like 30 degrees up would be like right here. And that just kind of helps us, 150. So those reference angles are gonna be really important in one of the other sections too. 240, 240 is bigger than 180, but it's a little bit smaller than 360. So what I would do is because it's bigger than 180, we're gonna subtract 180 to find the reference. So 240 minus 180. 240 minus 180 is 60 degrees. So. It's gonna be 60 degrees, but it's going to be in quadrant three. Because remember, this is 90 degrees, 180, 270. So that's why I'm saying it's gonna be in quadrant three. Now it's gonna be really important for you to know that 90, 180, and 270, super important. So let's start in standard position. There we go. And 60 degrees off of that x-axis right here, right there, okay? So 60 degrees off is like right there. And again, these are kind of estimates, but you're kind of getting the hang of it. So our reference angle, remember to name it quadrant three. So quad three and then 60 degrees. Perfect. Okay, last page. Okay. All right, the reference angle is a little weird on this one. So I'm gonna actually do it with you. So this one is over, 430 is bigger than 360. So I know that I am going to be over 360. So why don't we go ahead and subtract 360 so we can find its position, which was actually pretty similar to one we did earlier. So 430 minus 360 is 70 degrees. So I'll start in standard position. But remember, I already did one whole loop, right? 360 one whole loop, and then I'm gonna go 70 degrees. I know that's kind of an awkward number if like, you know, each one is 90, but that's okay. So you can mark this as 430, and then you can say that the reference angle is um, in quadrant one, and it's 70 degrees. Okay. One more. I have negative 30. So negative 30, the reference angle needs to be a positive. It cannot be a negative. So what I would actually do is I would add 360 to this, or you could just subtract 30 from 360. Either way, you will get 330 degrees. So here is my standard position, okay? 330 is kind of far away, um, but 330 would be the reference angle. It's not where I'm actually graphing it. If you want, well it is, but like you want to mark it as negative 30 degrees when you label it like that. But the reference angle is going to be um, 330 degrees in quadrant four, like that. Okay, so our last little bit of things right here, we need to find the trig ratios without using a calculator. So what we're actually going to do here is off to the side, we're actually gonna draw our special right triangles. So we're gonna draw 30, 60, 90 because all of these are 30, 60, 90s or 45, 45, 90s. So 30, 60, 90, there you go. And let's remember our ratios like from Mrs. Roby's video. So across from the 30 is a one, across from the 60 is a root three, and across from the right angle is a two. We're gonna use those to set up our trig ratios. 45, 45, 90, okay. Um, remember, 45, 45, those guys match. They are both ones across from the 45s, 
And then your hypotenuse is a root two. So we got to, I think we kind of went over on day one, you went over all the trig identities. So you should know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we go back to our right triangle and we look for 60 degrees, the opposite of 60 degrees is the root three and then the two goes on the bottom. So you should have root three over two for your sine of 60 degrees. So 16, secant of 45. Remember that secant is just co, co one over cosine or if you flip cosine. So I know that cosine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if you wanna write that A over H, but then we just flip it, so H over A. So in that 45, 45, 90, H is my hypotenuse, it is root two over my adjacent, which is just one, which really is just radical, it's root two. All right, tangent of 60. So tangent of 60 is, if you look at 60, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 60 degrees opposite is root three and the adjacent is one. So that would be radical three. All right, so why don't you guys go ahead and try 18, 19, and 20. Remember that cotangent is just one over tangent, so you'll have to flip the tangent. And then cosecant is one over sine, so you'll have to do both of those. So go ahead and pause your video now and do 18, 19, and 20. So here's my answers on 18, 19, and 20. If you need to pause to kind of look at my setup, you can. But 18, you should have gotten radical three. On 19, you should have gotten root three over two. And on 20, you should have just gotten root two. So if you take a look at these, I'm actually gonna get rid of some of those highlights. A lot of these match with each other. So like sine of 60, I got root three over two, which I also got over here on cosine of 30. Hmm, that's interesting. And then I also did the same thing over here. On secant of 45, I got root two, and oh, look at that, cosecant, also root two, huh? And then one more coincidence, tangent of 60 matches with cotangent of 30. Would you look at that? So why is this all happening? Well, there's a couple reasons to explain this, um, but like in our triangle, in our right triangle, right, we have a right angle for sure. And then our other two angles, we know like all the angles in the triangle have to add up to 180. So these two guys, right, if one angle's already 90, they must add up to 90. These are called complementary angles. Since the angles complement each other, they also are, be, are able to, um, like they also have, um, sorry guys, I'm blanking. They also, like their ratios will also match up depending on the position of the angle and what trig identity, okay? So each triangle has its, each angle has its own adjacent or opposite, when it's flipped, the reciprocal would match some other trig identity. So that's what we're going to write, okay? So each angle has its own opposite and adjacent side. When those are flipped, it will match another trig identity or they will complement each other, right? Sorry, that needs to say trig. There we go. So how can we easily remember these? Well, um, because it's that complementary, right? That complement, we always work with that 90. So the sine of the theta will always equal cosine of 90 minus that angle. For all of these, for tangent, for cotangent, 90 minus theta, 90 minus theta. Okay, so these guys kind of go together, right? Sine and cosine can go together. Tangent and cotangent can go together. 
and secant and cosecant can go together. These are called co-functions. Okay, so that's all we have on day three. I know that this part's kind of confusing, like the why, but just know like each angle has its own complement, and that's why we can do it. If you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow in class. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day.